Well, as those temperatures continue to shoot up into the triple digit, we're really watching some of that convection make its way in from the north and out to the west, where those temperatures are really prompting a lot of cloud convection to develop. But it's staying clear of our region because of a lot of the stronger systems off to the east, which we'll take a look at later. Right now, everyone hanging out in those triple digit scores, hot enough to prompt those heat advisories across the Concho Valley. And we're going to continue to monitor this because that warning is being extended all the way out to Wednesday. Anytime those temperatures are between 103 and pretty much 8 p.m., we're going to continue to make sure that those are in the area. That heat dome that we've been talking about really building because this low pressure system off to the east is really what's causing some of this trouble as we continue to watch this high pressure really build in over Texas and most of the west coast. As you see, it extends all the way from off west of California and then makes its way all the way over into Florida. We're watching a lot of severe weather develop right along this line and throughout the rest of the week and that's going to be the case as it pulls a lot of that moisture out of Texas and makes its way more off towards Ohio and Arkansas. Right now you can see a lot of that moisture, which is why it's so humid out there, is going to be pulled up into our region, but that low pressure is going to pull it out and head off to the east. As we can see, it's really creating this nice little circular area around the Concho Valley, keeping conditions a little more pleasant, but more dry. As we watch the fronter tracker, it's going to show you where it's developing in between these areas of high pressure and how strong it is as it continues to develop these storms right along the southern border there as we continue to watch it move through Mississippi, Alabama, make its way off to the east coast and into Florida. And then we're continuing to watch it develop right along the Oklahoma area, and that makes its way into next weekend, but it's still a little far out to guarantee that's going to be good or not. Right now, the severe weather outlook really showing how it's extending down in between those areas of high pressure when you're looking at it on that front tracker, and then we get a good look at the satellite, and that's showing you where those storms are starting to pop up. And then, of course, off to the west co or west of Texas, along the panhandle, we're watching that classic line of storms really push through, drop some moisture, and then we have our eyes peeled right here off to the west coast as any of that development could make its way down to the Edwards Plateau, but we are we think it might run out of energy as those clouds start to combine with mountain uh, breeze diurnal effects where temperatures start to cool off, things start to dry out, kind of gets pulled out of our region with those lighter winds that you're really seeing, keeping those humidity levels high. You can see a couple clouds bubbling up here and there, and as we make our way into the evening, you'll see some of that cloud cover return. Right now, we're looking at those triple-digit temperatures really across the board as we continue to make our way in towards the evening. You're going to see those temperatures slowly cool off because those clouds are really going to start to build in. And then we kind of see where that prompts over those heat advisors, and that's what's showing you that anytime those temperatures temperatures are really touching up into that feels like or dangerous or relative humidity. We want to see good breaks because it's going to try to push us back into those triple digit temperatures like it did in June, but now into July. And that'll give us a good estimate as we make our way through this El Nino season because it's supposed to be stronger than normal. Humidity values out there showing you just how much those heat advisories are affecting where you can see it's dropped down about 20% from yesterday. But as we make our way into the evening hours, we can see a lot of that moisture start to condense in our area. And so we're going to watch as those storms are going to push into our area, hopefully drop a lot of precept. Seeing that line of thunderstorms is going to be making its way late tonight, early tomorrow, causing a lot of that cloud cover. But by the time you wake up, you're going to see them quickly burn off as temperatures are going to shoot back up into the triple digits while that sun tries to cook off any of the cloud cover, keeping us cooler. So we'll see those temperatures drop down into the upper 70s tonight and then tomorrow. Again, jumping back up into those triple digits, starting with a cloudier start, but keeping us prompted for any heat advisories that are going to be in effect until Wednesday. And that's going to be the case as we make our way through that second week of July where we're continuing to see those temperatures slowly cool off. Could see an opportunity for a rain shower or two, but then as we continue to make our way towards that weekend already, we're going to see those temperatures really stay about where they should be in that average range. Stay tuned. We'll have more up after the break. You're watching KSAN News at 5.